Eternal Recurrence by Friedrich Nietzsche, 1844 to 1900, from The Will to Power, Book Four. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Eternal Recurrence my philosophy reveals the triumphant thought through which all other systems of thought must ultimately perish it is the great disciplinary thought those races that cannot bear it are doomed those which regard it as the greatest blessing are destined to rule the greatest of all fights for this purpose a new weapon is required a hammer a terrible alternative must be created europe must be brought face to face with the logic of facts and confronted with the question whether its will for ruin is really earnest general leveling down to mediocrity must be avoided rather than this it would be preferable to perish a pessimistic attitude of mind and a pessimistic doctrine and ecstatic nihilism may in certain circumstances even prove indispensable to the philosopher that is to say as a mighty form of pressure or hammer with which he can smash up degenerate perishing races and put them out of existence with which he can beat a track to a new order of life or instill a longing for non-entity in those who are degenerate and who desire to perish i wish to teach the thought which gives unto many the right to cancel their existences the great disciplinary thought eternal recurrence a prophecy one the exposition of the doctrine and its theoretical first principles and results two the proof of the doctrine three probable results which will follow from its being believed it makes everything break open a the means of enduring it b the means of ignoring it four its place in history is a means the period of greatest danger the foundation of an oligarchy above peoples and their interests education directed at establishing a political policy for humanity in general a counterpart of jesuitism the two greatest philosophical points of view both discovered by germans a that of becoming and that of evolution b that based upon the values of existence but the wretched form of german pessimism must first be overcome both points of view reconciled by me in a decisive manner everything becomes and returns forever escape is impossible granted that we could appraise the value of existence what would be the result of it the thought of recurrence is a principle of selection in the service of power and barbarity the ripeness of man for this thought one the thought of eternal recurrence its first principles which must necessarily be true if it were true what its result is two it is the most oppressive thought its probable results provided it be not prevented that is to say provided all values be not transvalued three the means of enduring it the transvaluation of all values pleasure no longer to be found in certainty but in uncertainty no longer cause and effect but continual creativeness no longer the will to self-preservation but to power no longer the modest expression it is all only subjective but it is all our work let us be proud of it in order to endure the thought of recurrence freedom from morality is necessary new means against the fact pain pain regarded as the instrument as the father of pleasure 
there is no accretive consciousness of pain pleasure derived from all kinds of uncertainty and tentativeness as a counterpoise to extreme fatalism suppression of the concept necessity suppression of the will suppression of absolute knowledge greatest elevation of man's consciousness of strength as that which creates superman the two extremes of thought the materialistic and the platonic are reconciled in eternal recurrence both are regarded as ideals if the universe had a goal that goal would have been reached by now if any sort of unforeseen final state existed that state also would have been reached if it were capable of any halting or stability of any being it would only have possessed this capability of becoming stable for one instant in its development and again becoming would have been at an end for ages and with it all thinking and all spirit the fact of intellects being in a state of development proves that the universe can have no goal no final state and is incapable of being but the old habit of thinking of some purpose in regard to all phenomena and of thinking of a directing and creating deity in regard to the universe is so powerful that the thinker has to go to great pains in order to avoid thinking of the very aimlessness of the world as intended the idea that the universe intentionally evades a goal and even knows artificial means wherewith it prevents itself from falling into a circular movement must occur to all those who would fain attribute to the universe the capacity of eternally regenerating itself that is to say they would fain impose upon a finite definite force which is invariable in quantity like the universe the miraculous gift of renewing its forms and its conditions for all eternity although the universe is no longer a god it must still be capable of the divine power of creating and transforming it must forbid itself to relapse into any one of its previous forms it must not only have the intention but also the means of avoiding any sort of repetition every second of its existence even it must control every single one of its movements with a view of avoiding goals final states and repetition and all the other results of such an unpardonable and insane method of thought and desire all this is nothing more than the old religious mode of thought and desire which in spite of all longs to believe that in some way or other the universe resembles the old beloved infinite and infinitely creative god that in some way or other the old god still lives that longing of spinoza's which is expressed in the words dies siva natura what he really felt was natura siva dies which then is the proposition and belief in which the decisive change the present preponderance of the scientific spirit over the religious and god fancying spirit is best formulated ought it not to be the universe as force must not be thought of as unlimited because it cannot be thought of in this way we forbid ourselves the concept infinite force because it is incompatible with the idea of force whence it follows that the universe lacks the power of eternal renewal the principle of the conservation of energy inevitably involves eternal recurrence that a state of equilibrium has never been reached proves that it is impossible but in infinite space it must have been reached likewise in spherical space the form of space must be the cause of the eternal movement and ultimately of all imperfection that energy and stability and immutability are contradictory 
the measure of energy dimensionally is fixed though it is essentially fluid that which is timeless must be refuted any given moment of energy the absolute conditions for a new distribution of all forces are present it cannot remain stationary change is part of its essence therefore time is as well by this means however the necessity of change has only been established once more in theory a certain emperor always bore the fleeting nature of all things in his mind in order not to value them too seriously and to be able to live quietly in their midst conversely everything seems to me much too important for it to be so fleeting i seek an eternity for everything ought one to pour the most precious salves and wines into the sea my consolation is that everything that has been is eternal the sea will wash it up again the new concept of the universe the universe exists it is nothing that grows into existence and that passes out of existence or better still it develops it passes away but it never began to develop and has never ceased from passing away it maintains itself in both states it lives on itself its excrements are its nourishment we need not concern ourselves for one instant with the hypothesis of a created world the concept create is today utterly indefinable and unrealizable it is but a word which hails from superstitious ages nothing can be explained with a word the last attempt that was made to conceive of a world that began occurred quite recently in many cases with the help of logical reasoning generally too as you will guess with an ulterior theological motive several attempts have been made lately to show that the concept that the universe has an infinite past regresses in infinitum is contradictory it was even demonstrated it is true at the price of confounding the head with the tail nothing can prevent me from calculating backwards from this moment of time and of saying i shall never reach the end just as i can calculate without end in a forward direction from the same moment it is only when i wish to commit the air i shall be careful to avoid it of reconciling this correct concept of a regressus in infinitum with the absolutely unrealizable concept of a finite progressus up to the present only when i consider the direction forwards or backwards as logically indifferent that i take hold of the head this very moment and think i hold the tail this pleasure i leave to you mr during i have come across this thought in other thinkers before me and every time i found that it was determined by other ulterior motives chiefly theological in favor of a creator spiritus if the universe were in any way able to congeal to dry up to perish or if it were capable of attaining to a state of equilibrium or if it had any kind of goal at all which a long lapse of time immutability and finality reserved for it in short to speak metaphysically if becoming could resolve itself into being or into non-entity this state ought already to have been reached but it has not been reached it therefore follows this is the only certainty we can grasp which can serve as a corrective to a host of cosmic hypotheses possible in themselves if for instance materialism cannot consistently escape the conclusion of a finite state which william thompson has traced out for it then materialism is thereby refuted if the universe may be conceived as a definite quantity of energy as a definite number of centers of energy and every other concept remains indefinite and therefore useless 
it follows therefrom that the universe must go through a calculable number of combinations in the great game of chance which constitutes its existence in infinity at some moment or other every possible combination must once have been realized not only this but it must have been realized an infinite number of times and inasmuch as between every one of these combinations and its next recurrence every other possible combination would necessarily have been undergone and since every one of these combinations would determine the whole series in the same order a circular movement of absolutely identical series is thus demonstrated the universe is thus shown to be a circular movement which has already repeated itself an infinite number of times and which plays its game for all eternity this conception is not simply materialistic for if it were this it would not involve an infinite recurrence of identical cases but a finite state owing to the fact that the universe has not reached this finite state materialism shows itself to be but an imperfect and provisional hypothesis and do ye know what the universe is to my mind shall i show it to you in my mirror this universe is a monster of energy without beginning or end a fixed and brazen quantity of energy which grows neither bigger nor smaller which does not consume itself but only alters its face as a whole its bulk is immutable it is a household without either losses or gains but likewise without increase and without sources of revenue surrounded by non-entity as by a frontier it is nothing vague or wasteful it does not stretch into infinity but it is a definite quantum of energy located in limited space and not in space which would be anywhere empty it is rather energy everywhere the play of forces and force waves at the same time one and many agglomerating here and diminishing there a sea of forces storming and raging in itself forever changing forever rolling back over incalculable ages of recurrence with an ebb and flow of its forms producing the most complicated things out of the most simple structures producing the most ardent most savage and most contradictory things out of the quietest most rigid and most frozen material and then returning from multifariousness to uniformity from the play of contradictions back into the delight of consonance saying yea unto itself even in this homogeneity of its courses and ages forever blessing itself as something which recurs for all eternity a becoming which knows not satiety or disgust or weariness this my dionysian world of eternal self-creation of eternal self-destruction this mysterious world of twofold voluptuousness this my beyond good and evil without aim unless there is an aim in the bliss of the circle without will unless a ring must by nature keep good will to itself would you have a name for my world a solution to all your riddles do ye also want a light ye most concealed strongest and most undaunted men of the blackest midnight this world is the will to power and nothing else and even ye yourselves are this will to power and nothing besides end of eternal recurrence by friedrich nietzsche from the will to power Book 4